Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel where we create photo realistic assets together. So in today's video, I want to show you guys how I concept and texture this asset in Substance Painter in two different ways. I found that for concepting, Substance Painter is a really efficient way to try out different ideas and materials very quickly. I know I promised you guys that I will show you how to texture the chameleon in Substance Painter in this tutorial, but I just feel like I still don't know Substance Painter well enough to the point that I have something different to say. I want to texture a few more assets in Painter first, maybe getting a little bit more familiar with the program, maybe I'll come back to the chameleon and uh, actually have something good to show you guys. Today's video is going to be a little bit random in general. It's more just me practicing on this asset and making something really fun for myself. I still hope it's helpful for you. Okay, let's jump into it. This is the sculpt I prepared for this project. I mostly sculpted it on the centerpiece. The horn is from a character that I was working on and kind of stopped. I went to a weapons museum recently and saw all this really cool medieval armor and they all have this really interesting ornaments and all the metal on there looks super interesting. So these are the things that's my main inspiration for the kind of material I want to practice on this asset. I selected some of the reference within all my pictures that looks particularly interesting to me and try to narrow down the target. Starting in Painter, the first thing we always have to do is to make sure we get a proper bake that represents the high resolution sculpt. I found it really useful sometimes, even before I finish my sculpting, I will throw different earlier versions of the sculpt into Painter, bake them, and throw some very simple material on them to see what kind of effects can I get. And that kind of feedback will actually help me to decide what kind of sculpting I need to put more onto my asset. With this guy, you can actually see the earlier version do not have those more fine ornamented detail on top. And after I put it into Painter, I find those areas look quite boring and broad. So I added those ornamented detail after. Now I will have a lot more sculpted detail to work with for my texture. I put together another reference image that includes the horn, so I have an idea of where I want to go with everything. First thing I want to do is to make sure I can actually get the necessary masks I need with current bake. I know that for this asset, I definitely need a really good mask for the ornament details. And I also need a really good mask for the more extrude area of the horn. I'm just going to test them out first to make sure I don't need a new bake. Then I will know everything is ready for texturing. Someone was asking me if making this type of asset is a good idea for the student reel. And to be honest, I don't think so, because this is more a concept uh, project. Whenever I work on something like this, it's more just for my own fun and a way to express myself artistically. It's not really practical for production. When you are still a student, you want to make sure that your main goal is to show people that you are very useful for actual production. And also because you're still early on your artistic journey, I would assume that design and concepting is not your strong suit yet. In most cases anyways. It might sound super boring, but as a student, you should make something that's more practical that actually show off solid skills. Once you're progressing in your career, you will have all the time and freedom to design concept, do whatever you want on your own. Now I'm happy with both masks, I'm going to put on the first material. My first idea is to have this dark metal as base and have gold ornamented detail on top. A lot of the smart materials in Substance Painter is already looking very good. So I'm just going to be a bit lazy here and uh, give it a smart material and then adjust it according to the way I like it. I think I used Iron Age Old as a base and then put a bronze material on top and going to create the mask in between the one I tested before. I should get a decent first look. I'm not building everything from scratch, so I don't know how helpful this is going to be for you guys if you just want to learn how to build basic material. 
I want to make my channel an R focused channel where you not only learn software, but you also learn some R fundamentals and how to make things look good. That is why I'm very insistent on having a finished asset for you every tutorial. There are plenty of YouTube channels out there that shows you what each button does. Whenever I don't know how to do something technically, all I have to do is just go on YouTube and search or go on Google and search. I will find my answers. Every software has its full documentation. If you go look at Mari documentation, it literally explains everything in depth of what everything does. It's a very important skill for people like us that does this type of job to be able to find answers on your own. Because every project has its own challenges and problems. You're never going to face the same thing exactly like last time. So you will have to learn problem solve. Problem solving is a key skill right up there with be technically efficient and uh, have our fundamentals. It's also a skill that you learn and improve. And I don't think people talk about it enough. The most subject that people talk about is software and tools. It's great to know all the tools. It's great to know everything you can do with the tools. But why are we learning those tools is to make something that looks good. I feel like sometimes people are so hung up on which tool to use, which tool is better, which button to press, what does every button do that they forgot about what is the reason why you're learning all this to begin with. At the end of the day, the only thing that matters is the result. If I've done something that looks incredible and use Photoshop, who cares? This is where I want to build my channel differently. I want to show you the results. I don't want to just show you where to press, but not having a quality asset at the end. Okay, that was a bit of a rant, um, but I think it needs to be said and just to express what kind of channel I'm trying to build here and what kind of content you can expect from my channel. It's about learning skills, but it's also about creating art. I will always offer you tips and tricks of what I'm learning by actually working on my projects. I will try to prepare some software beginner video from time to time, but it's not going to be the focus of this channel. There is great value in videos like that, especially when you are still a beginner of a certain program. I'm just trying to focus on a different side of things. I know it probably makes it less beginner friendly, but I think you can get something else out of these videos. If there's just not as many people watching it, I'm totally fine with that. Okay, sorry about that huge rant. Um, let's get back to the project. I'm still working on the first two material that I put on this area of the asset. I'm just breaking down all the layers that's already there and adjust them to the way I see on the reference. I think this is a pretty good start for this area. I'm going to work on the horns a little bit more. For the horn area, I'm imagining some sort of bone slash wood material. What I decided to do is to start with a wood preset material. I'm breaking down every layer to see if they're actually useful for my purpose or I have to adjust them accordingly. I like how this texture come with this stripy look that I actually see on the real horn. In the UV view, you can see that I actually purposely unwrap the horn UV to almost a straight line. So I can have that kind of texture aligned with the shape of the horn. I'm also adjusting the horn to be a bit darker just because that's what I imagined in my head. I need to find a color that works well with what I already have for the centerpiece. But at this point, I'm not quite sure of any of the color decision yet. Anything is adjustable in here. So for now, I'm just going to put down all the basic elements that I have in mind and uh, adjust them accordingly and add extra elements to make them look better. Going to do a quick render to see what it looks like now. It's looking OK. I'm not sure how much I love this at the moment. I think I'm going to take some time to think about this one and uh, start another version in the meantime. For the second version, I'm imagining this uh, different design where the ornamented area is actually more bare metal looking 
and、um, what's on the side is more maybe painted metal or some kind of brass metal. I will build the bare metal layer first. Then I will quickly layer on top the brass material and try to create the proper mask for that. That looks kind of like the reference. At this point, I actually have no plan for the horn. I was thinking maybe have one version that's just like fully metal with this type of look. It's looking way too simple though. I know I will have to do something different with it. I really like the painted metal look from this bug asset, which I'm sure everybody probably seen it at this point. Substance is using it to promote the software. I really love this guy's work. I love that how this material looks. So I'm gonna try to recreate that part of the material for the centerpiece. First, I work on the metal underneath and instance it also to the horn area. I prepared some basic texture from Mega Skin. And try to create that kind of. It's still painted metal, but you can see the metal quality coming through. Then I need to make a new mask for the ornamented area, so the bare metal underneath can show up. I have to invert this one because it's the opposite of the last one I did. Now we can see the metal showing through from the edge and the ornamented area. Just this one color for this entire area is a little boring. I think I will add a lighter shade to certain area as well. So I basically duplicate the exact same material and change to a lighter diffuse map. I actually don't even need a new diffuse map. I can adjust the base color with adjustment layers. I will use a soft brush and reveal the lighter paint in certain areas that I think looks cool. This is what it looks like in the end. My first attempt of the horn for this version was a rock material. It might be a little bit odd to combine some sort of rock with the painted metal I have. It was worth trying, but in the end, I found it a little too odd, so didn't go with this version. I decided to try out another metal material for the horn as well. So I ended up with some kind of a dark metal in between the cavity area and some kind of a light bronze metal on top. I'm liking where this is going, so I'm putting it down for a few seconds and coming back to the first version and want to do some adjustments. I'm honestly just showing you the real sequence of how I was working on them. I find it very useful to take breaks from design problems, and、uh, when you come back, you have a brand new perspective. The previous version of this guy was、uh, a bit too dark, so I made it brighter. But I also want to add some value variation into it as well. The whole material still seems quite simple. We need、uh, some more surface breakup. The first thing I do is to add the dust breakup. A very light layer of dust that will nicely break up the spec. I want this mask to be light and not too noticeable. Also, adjust the color of the dust according to the color of the surface. Going to do the same for the centerpiece as well. I didn't instance the dust cross to the centerpiece because they actually need separate adjustments. And the color adjustments is different as well. For this piece, the surface color is much darker. After the dust, I'm gonna add another grunge type of material. This is not a real object. I don't really know what kind of dirt should be on this thing. This is mostly just for the purpose of having another layer of color breakup and spec breakup. Same idea. Adjust the color a bit to get a nice variation. Going to do the same with this area as well. It's kind of nice to add another tone of.、Um, Reddish color on the black surface. I also see this、uh, lighter area on the horn that I don't have yet, so I'm gonna add some of that color variation into it. I went back to the other version and done the exact same process: the dust and the grunge. Did a quick render to see how everything looks together. I think I like where this is going. I think I want to add the last bit of breakup. The first thing I add is some patina breakup for the metal. The next thing I want to add is some extra shine in certain areas. So I created another silver-looking material and kind of just brushed it in. I want to add some extra breakup on the other version of the horn as well. For this one, the color is too uniform, so I want to add some broad 
color breakup. I also want to have a bit more definition and shape to the sculpt. So I create a mask that's around all the curvature area. I created another layer of uh, material that's uh, slightly brighter and apply the mask to it. That is pretty much everything I've done to these guys and this is the final render I have. I wanted to keep this video short and sweet since it's just a random video of me showing you my process of creating this random asset. It still ended up being quite long so sorry about that. Please like the video if you got something out of it and uh, subscribe to my channel if you like the kind of content I create. I have a couple free guides for you in the description. One is for realistic texturing and one is for an organic workflow. So check them out if you're interested. I will also upload a 45 minute version of this tutorial up on Gumroad. There is no voice narration, it's just a more complete process video. Some people were requesting this, so this is for you. Okay, that's enough of me rambling. I will see you in the next one.